when the temperature of the water goes high, those algae that Lisa was talking about, they don't like it and they die or they leave. And then also when a coral is stressed by the hot water, they lose their resistance and they become sick. Okay? The earth has a fever. You can tell the little children, the earth is, is sick, it has a fever. This is climate change, it's global warming. And this is the, really the only widely recognized form of climate change adaptation is to get the reefs healthy. I'm in, I'm in Belize um, helping the community of Placencia and, uh, and Belize in general to begin a coral restoration program focusing on two species of corals that are critically endangered. And these uh, corals, the staghorn and the elkhorn corals, are a, a tiny fraction of what they were in the past. Okay, this is what we use for sunscreen. It's, it's just coated aspirin. And um, a dermatologist told me this a few years ago, um, that if you take aspirin when you go out in the sun, you won't burn. And because sunscreen is so toxic to corals, I tried it, and it works. What do you got? Oh, you can have it while you're eating. Climate change is affecting reefs in three main ways. One is increase in hurricanes. Another is an increase in bleaching. And the third cause of, of coral reef decline due to climate change is disease. What can we do to get these corals back again? So what we're doing is we're, we're looking for these places where good local management has brought the health back on a particular reef. We'll go ask a fisherman, a reef guide, um, a marine biologist that might know, and we'll, we'll try to locate these few pockets of coral. Little, sometimes it's just one little colony yeah, left. So, um, so Dale, you were telling me you found another um, big patch of, of the staghorn of the Cervaconus. Where exactly did you see it? Yeah, right in um, Lark Key, mm -hmm. about eight miles from here. Yeah, yeah and yeah. How, how deep is it? Um, well, two areas, one have about maybe 15 to 20 feet, and the other area is about eight feet. Mm -hmm. and about how so what we'll do is we'll locate these, and we take samples of the coral, we take a few branches uh, carefully, and we grow them on ropes. Okay, what we're going to be doing here is planting those rescued coral fragments on these ropes. So we have a lot of coral fragments that break from, well, in this case today, from an anchor. Maybe it looks like about two, three weeks ago, somebody threw their anchor on the reef. So what we're going to do is we take those little um, branches, we open a rope, and we just stick the branch in the hole and then we close it back up. One of you has to open the eye, the other has to stick the coral in there. I'll stick near you. You stick? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got this. <laughs> okay, now, some pieces are a little bit too big, I think. Oh, okay. now, I, now I'm really doing it. Okay, try a small piece to start with. Okay, go ahead. Yep, yep. Good. Ooh. Yeah. Make sure it's tight now. Make sure it's tight, yeah. And, and if, okay, right. The, Here's the final necklace, all slimy and sliming now. This is, these are living creatures. Make it tight. Okay, I'll get that. Put the line. What, what if we, down if we, we go down that way, so. We will keep, keep on it. Okay, we got it. Don't guy. be scared. So we, we, we take these remnant populations, we take a piece and we put them on the ropes. We grow them big, then we trim those and we plant them into the, um, the national park and to, to increase them. So we just take a small bit 
we grow it on the rope, we get 10 to 20 times more coral in each year, and then we use those second generation fragments. These corals are incredible. They grow so rapidly. A single branch of staghorn coral can grow a minimum of 10 times in a year, but up to 20 times, it's not, it's even, even 25 or 30 times in a year in, in, in its size. So 10 centimeters will become 30 centimeters. So then you can break that into smaller pieces and then you have lots more. So uh, we, what our big success is being able to produce large numbers of second generation coral fragments in, in, in the nurseries. See the size of the fragments are roughly 10 centimeters or so. And so these um, are the whippery ropes from March when we first set them up um, to just last week. So you can see how much growth we're getting in this area. These corals are super duper happy. And when Austin was talking about the exponential uh, amount of fragments that we have, that's because we've been still debating and discussing, are we going to cut each branch and make one more fragment or are we gonna leave some larger sizes so we're out planting a larger size colony. Um, so we have a lot of work to do. One thing that's interesting about these corals and it's so depressing when the bleaching, the, it, the corals have bleached from hot water multiple times and people are looking at this and say, the corals are dying and they're very depressed and they go back and they go through many, many miles of reef, kilometers and kilometers and they'll find one patch of staghorn coral or two patches. At least we have some survivors. These corals that have survived are tolerant against that hot water they are adapted to climate change. So this is climate change adaptation to look for all the corals that have survived in this bleaching area and take a bit of each. Then we will have those thermally tolerant corals that when we replant the corals back into the no fishing area, these are all the survivors of a horrible event, horrible series of events. So these are, we can assume they are stronger. So let's take them, realizing that, that when the bleaching happens again, it won't be as bad or it won't affect those individuals. So this is truly climate change adaptation. We are getting these reefs hardened to the increasing water temperature. Where we see lobsters, we see good coral survival and we see fewer predators. There may be other things as well, but, but it looks like without lobsters, the reef dies. So these no fishing areas, wonderful. We are ready now. We've learned all these lessons. We know what to do, how to grow them, how to select them, how to map them, how to plant them. And we know all this. We are ready now to go regional to support the no-take areas and also to, to really rescue these last remaining genetic individuals of these corals in many of these countries in the Caribbean. If we wait another five years, we have that, that population will go extinct, that population. The staghorn coral is still going downhill in nearly every country you visit, virtually every country and every municipality. So it's a matter of going regional very early on in the project because of the critical, you know, it's, it's urgent, it's urgent.